Hi, this is JP from Now the Lights Over Arkham. This time we are uh, looking into the Edge of the Earth Investigator expansion that just came out. I decided to make a video series on the investigators that come in the uh, pack and also the new investigator cards, but then I thought that uh, so many other content creators are already doing that, so instead I will make a four episode series. In the first episode, which is this, I will be building a couple of decks from the new investigators. Uh, and then in the last three episodes, I will be playing those two investigators two handed through the Return to Night of the Zealot campaign. So let's get started. The Edge of the Earth campaign is a bit different with the release uh, si or release module for Arkham Horror the card game. Uh, we are are getting two boxes instead of one ex uh, one uh, uh, deluxe expansion box and uh, six mythos packs. So the first box is the Edge of the Earth Investigator expansion, which just came out here in Finland. It has come out in the UK, at least as far as I know, and it is still on, not released in the US, so I'm hoping everybody gets their expansion uh, soon enough, but uh, the release dates are what they are, and unfortunately there are some hiccups uh, in the release dates, but uh, enough of that. So. Uh, let's look what comes in the box. So, of course, the regular investigator mini cards, uh, five investigators with their signature cards. We have uh, Bob Jenkins, then we have uh, Lily Chen, uh, Monterey Jack, and Norman Witters, which we have already seen uh, earlier in a novella, but now with the uh, uh, cards that are listed behind. Then we have uh, Daniela Reyes, so those are the five investigators and uh, I already actually decided that I will pick two investigators that do not uh, contradict with their deck building cards that much. So I am picking Lily Chen and Bob Jenkins as the investigators I am using. So we start with the mystic that will turn into a guardian and we also start uh, uh, play with a survivor that turns into a rogue so we get to see uh, cards from uh, four different um, classes uh, unfortunately well the, there are a few cards that have a uh, rogue and uh, seeker oh, and the big thing in this box is that uh, these are all the class cards, so not that big chunks. So a few level zero cards, then experience cards, etc. It is the same with all of these. I am not going through all of them. It's ju it would be just a boring uh, video for me broken, uh, breaking down the cards because uh, so many other content creators are already doing that. So look for those videos and uh, I will just uh, do the deck building video. The big thing uh, in this expansion is that uh, we already got the dual class cards in a previous cycle in the Circle Undone, but now they are really leaning into that uh, new mechanic from there. So we are getting a ton of new dual class cards and there are also events here so uh, we have a lot of new stuff to think about when deck building and uh, they made clarifications that uh, previously Norman Withers would count dual class cards as uh, their secondary class but now they clarified because all of these investigators follow the same principle of deck building that you will have a main class that you start with so you can only have cards uh, level zero from that class 
and then uh, you can uh, start turning into the other class so you get uh, levels one to five experience cards from the other class so for example uh, Bob Jenkins is a level zero survivor who will get to upgrade his deck to level one to five uh, uh, rope cards and of course all of them can take uh, five level zero of class cards or the uh, class cards that they are turning into and also level zero to five uh, neutral cards so these are not considered as neutral they are dual class cards so they are counted as uh, a card of uh, the faction listed here so this medical student here for example is a guardian and a seeker card so if you are main class guardian you can take this and if you're a main class seeker you can take this etc and uh, if if you for example can uh, take uh, level four guardian cards the level four sledgehammer is okay and even if you're a survivor that can take level four survivor cards the sledgehammer is okay but I think that's uh, enough of the uh, box that comes in it. Uh, there is a handbook here. It only pre uh, tells us how uh, the dual class cards work, how uh, research keyword works and stuff like that. Some frequently asked questions, so maybe check those out when you get the box. Uh, the expansion icon is a snowflake, I think. Well. No, nothing really fancy there, but I think we are ready to jump into Arkham DP. I actually already built these decks uh, beforehand filming this video, so nothing random getting generated this time. So let's just hop into Arkham DP. Okay, so uh, first up we have Lily Chen up on the screen. Uh, Lily Chen is a mystic. So we start heavily on the mystic side of uh, the deck pool. Uh, first off, uh, we have Dragon Pole. Unfortunately, um, Arkham DB doesn't have all of the card images up yet, so uh, we at least have the cards so we can build decks here and the text. So um, Dragon Pole gives us one additional arcane slot. Also, uh, it gives us uh, fight you get plus one fight uh, or combat for this attack for each of your arcane slots that is filled if at least two of your arcane slots are filled this attack deals plus one damage so this is a key card in my plan to play Lily Chen so uh, we have a lot of uh, other cards that are mainly here to be in the arcane slots for healing or stuff like that and uh, preventing damage so yeah these are basically just to fire up the dragon pole then uh, I am trying out the new weapon sledgehammer so uh, you drop your uh, combat by one but deal plus one damage and uh, you can do a double action you get plus two combat and deal plus two damage so this is a really efficient way to uh, deal a lot of damage. And of course Lily can upgrade to the Guardian uh, level 4 Sledgehammer later if we get to there. And that is a really strong card. And as I said, Clarity of Mind and Healing Words. Not new cards, but I'm having them in the deck so I have a way to... Uh, Heal damage and horror and uh, occupy my arcane slots. Then we have a new uh, card which sounds like a um, accessory but it is not. It is an arcane slot item. So it's a talisman of protection. So this basically lets us prevent damage and it's a fast um, card to play. Oh yeah and it, uh, if you, you when you assign a damage and or horror that you would defeat you, discard talisman of 
protection cancel of the tube so it prevents you from dying basically but it, it, it occupies your arcane slots which uh, synchronize as well with lily and the dragon pole uh, then we have hallowed mirror nothing special well just damage and horror healing uh, lily is really uh, tuned for fighting and defending uh, bob while bob will be the clarified investigator of the pair. Uh, then we have Robes of Endless Night and this is because Lily still has, even though uh, she will turn into a guardian, she has a lot of spells in the deck. Also Arcane Initiate helps us uh, fetch those spells to kill the Arcane slots, etc. Mm, then, uh, well, uh, Enchanted Blade was that I just wanted a few extra weapons in the deck. This uh, course is not the main weapon we are looking for. We are really searching for the dragon poles or sledgehammers. And of course I forgot to mention we have one copy of backpack because these both decks are pretty asset heavy and item asset heavy. So uh, I included backpacks to both. I <laughs> rarely use backpacks so I decided to try to use it uh, because Bob really wants uh, to see investigators with item assets to help them play them out, so why not use backpacks to get those item assets out of your deck so that you can play them as if they were in your hand. Uh, then uh, two of the five of class cards are safeguard. This is because Lily's main deal is to keep Bob healthy. So. When Bob moves to investigate somewhere, Lily saves actions to move with him, with safeguard and etc. Uh, then uh, Lily's deck building is that uh, for in, in deck creation you pick one discipline. I, I picked one and after each 15 experiences you can pick another one. So I decided to pick the combat uh, boosting one. So when you activate this, you get plus 5 skill value to your next skill test. For the perform this turn after that skill test ends, flip the asset over. So uh, when you flip it over, you it is a negative thing or something like that. So uh, Then, uh, of course, we get burdens of destiny as the weakness, uh, signature weaknesses in the deck. And uh, you get those as many of those as you have disciplines. So we only have one at this point. Well, uh, then uh, we have some events, so not to burden Bob too much with the investigation. I also added Drawn to the Flames and uh, read the signs in the deck. These are just to help out with the clue getting because Lily doesn't have a, that great of a intellect. Uh, so uh, we read the signs and uh, Drawn to the flame, we have some ways to grab some clues to help out. And uh, the, these both grab two clues, so these are perfect for uh, two handed play. Uh, emergency caches, just because we are playing a lot of assets, even with pops, discounts, and etc., uh, we want to have a good economy going on the deck. Also, the ropes of endless night helps playing the spells, so that saves up uh, our monies for the assets. A word of protections, why not, because Mystic helps helps us uh, ignore some nasty tre uh, treacheries that will discard assets or something like that. And then uh, the last two cards are two copies of Promise of Power, and this is just so strong, even if it uh, adds one first token into the back, uh, boosting your ability or, or skill by four is a really powerful thing uh, so I usually always add this into the deck nowadays. Uh, our random weakness uh, I first decided that I would use the new random weaknesses but those are so monotone and specific uh, they are all, all the same kinds I'm not talking about them that much at this point so I uh, random drew and I got through the gates for Lily. So this could really hurt if we 
hit some of our key cards, like for example Dragon Balls or Sledge Hammers or something like that, and lose those, but it is what it is. And that is Lily. So next up, we will jump into Bob and look what we put into Bob's deck. Okay, and now we have Bob on the screen. So Bob Jenkins is a survivor that turns into Rogue. I decided to try out one of the more in uh, more interesting cards in for deck building in this deck. So I took in the thick of it. Uh, for Bob, so this is a permanent limit one per deck purchase at deck creation. When you purchase in the thick of it, suffer two total physical and or mental trauma, then earn three experience. So right off from the get-go we have three experience to spend for rogue cards. This is because I really wanted to get uh, some cards for investigating an economy for Bob from the rogue right from the get-go. So uh, we uh, we probably will take two mental trauma for Bob. So we have six and six for the stats and go from there. Let's start looking at the cards. So uh, just to, to have uh, something that we can fight with in the deck. Uh, there are other cards also, but this is the main one. So if we have to fight, Bob still has three fights. So with uh, the 18 Derringer Bob can defend himself against cultist and uh, smaller enemies. So we have these in the deck. Then, uh, of course, because Bob will be our investigator, we have two copies of flashlights. This is just to help out get some clues. Uh, then, uh, Grave Digger Shovel. Again, it's a weapon to help for fighting, but it's also uh, is an auto discover a clue if we need to. Uh, lanterns, again, these are really good when dealing with the uh, one health cultist enemies. Also, another way to help with uh, investigating. Then uh, we used two experience of our three for the two uh, level one block picks. These are really, really good for Bob because uh, you add your uh, agility value to the test, so you are investigating with, seven, with a uh, skill of 7, so block picks should be really good for Bob. And goes with the uh, item spamming playstyle. And the new favorite investigative card for Rogue, uh, not Rogue, but Survivor, the old keyring, really strong card, two copies of that. Then a uh, new card. To help us investigate locations, we are not at so uh, pocket telescope. Uh, Lily could run beforehand into a room, and then Bob just stands in the corridor looking in with the pocket telescope and investigating. This also um, helps us if, if we get the attic revealed. And then one of those uh, named uh, ghouls, for example, spawn in the attic and we can't move in there. So uh, Bob could just stand in the corridor, which is a one-shot location. Well, it doesn't matter if we use the, loca uh, the um, investigated location's shroud value, so it, it doesn't matter. But still, you, you don't have to move into the room, you can just investigate from the corridor, get the clues and not even enter there. And maybe Lily can go defeat that victory point enemy later or something. But yeah, interesting card and it is a Seeker Rogue card. So this is actually one of the uh, five cards we can take from Rogue's level zero. So two of those. Then uh, we as said we have one backpack also in Bob. Then a new ally, Professor William Webb. Uh, again, this lets you do some interesting things with investigating. Uh, so you spend one secret instead of discovering clue at your location, either choose an item card in your discard file and add it to your hand, or discover a clue at a random, at, at a connecting location. So again, um, Lily could run beforehand into a room, 
start fighting the enemies there and Bob just stays in the corridor, investigates his location but discovers the clues from the next location. So interesting ally and I'm really uh, liking that you can include this in the survivor class and also in the seeker class. So good card for both I think. Then new cards we have bandages. Uh, this is again uh, to help help keep your allies and your uh, investigators healthy. So every time you take a damage with an ally or an investigator at your location, you can spend one supply and uh, heal one damage from that card. And this is after because. Uh, if you haven't suffered any damages, you can still use the bandage. So, uh, then uh, we have uh, Scuff Nurse Catalog. So, this is a new card that also that helps you uh, play item assets uh, cheaper. So, you spend secrets to discount the card. So, uh, this costs you, but it gives you five secrets. So, basically, five resources to play item assets. So I'm not sure about this card, but we'll see how this works. And uh, this also can be used to cheapen assets from another player's hand when another play investigator plays cards. So again, combos with Bob, pretty good. And uh, uh, then we have events, and this is a real rogue heavy event, but hit me is a rogue and survival card, so it doesn't take up the rogue slots uh, for le level 0. It's a fast card play after you reveal a chaos token during a skill test. Reveal an additional chaos token, switch its minus to a plus. If that chaos token is a skull token, you automatically fail. So this makes the minus force and stuff like that really good, but it, there's a turn side to this. So if you draw a skull, it is an automatic fail, so you uh, triple the amount of automatic fail tokens in the back. If you hit, use this, but there is a chance you hit big. So really liking the uh, gambling aspect of that card. Uh, one copy of you handle this one, because this was the last uh, Rogue Zero card I was adding. And the, the first two were the pocket telescopes, then uh, the second two are 21 or bust. I could have just taken Faustian Bargain, but I wanted to include more newer cards. So 21 or bust, so this is a, another Gambit card, which you uh, <laughs> might uh, start making a mini game uh, around for. So uh, trying to recur this and just getting resources. So if you um, hit 18 or less, you gain 4 resources, so you always will get 4 resources, no matter what. This costs you, by the way. And then, uh, if you hit 19, 5 resources, 20, 6 resources, but if you hit 21, you get 9 resources. And uh, if you go over... I think, uh, actually, not sure what happens if you go over. Maybe nothing happens. I think nothing happens because there is no, nothing happening if you go over 21. Well, we'll see. Then uh, uh, the other one experience I use this for three copies of the Ismark. So again this is a Myriad card from the Dream Eaters. So Myriad means you buy them as a set, use only one uh, the, the amount of experience one of them costs but you get three copies of them. So I bought one used one experience to get three copies of Ismark. So we have a good economy economy a good economy going from the get-go and the last card I was thinking of adding um, emergency caches but I thought we have enough uh, enough economy in Bob already so I decided to add jury rig 
So this makes uh, the weapon either Bob or Lily is using uh, more better weapon so you, you get boost plus two to the skill value of the test for the uh, asset and you actually can use this to any item as controlled by an investigator at your location so if, if, if it's like a flashlight or something or you, you could add this to it but uh, of course the, the image um, isn't showing here but it is a baseball bat uh, wrapped in barbed wire so I of course immediately went to a weapon asset with my thinking. Then uh, we hit self-centered for the um, basic weakness for Bob. So, uh, well, I'm not that bummed out about it. We can't commit cards to other investigator skill tests. Uh, we have zero uh, skill cards in the deck, so not that bothered about that. And that is basically both of the decks, so next up I will build the decks and start playing. So we are building Lily and Bob using those decks I just uh, showed you. I will put the deck list into the video description here and to the uh, gameplay episodes also. And of course I will go through the upgrades each time I make upgrades to the decks. So, hope you guys like this overview of the Edge of the Earth Investigator expansion and the deck building. Uh, look forward to the gameplay episodes. Thanks for watching and until next time.